Okay, so I wanted to share with you guys a little bit how I think about Git, how it makes me, how, how it's enabled me to like fix some problems in Git. And it was an aha moment for me when uh, I started working uh, like in, in IT in general, but in Git uh, especially. So Git is just a stupid content tracker. It doesn't know anything about the stuff that you have inside. So some people believe that things that you will see as like conflicts, uh, it should be able to resolve them because it knows which code is like newer and it's super obvious like what is actually the correct choice. It's not for Git. It just sees two lines of text. It doesn't understand what it is. So the fact that we're using that for source for source control, like for the source code that we're writing. It's just one of the use cases. You can write your own poem or a book or whatever and still use Git, that's totally okay. Or you can use it to, uh, I don't know, hold the graphics designs. Uh, one really important thing is that Git is distributed, so everybody has the same copy of the repository. There is no like central place uh, where it has all of the branches and everything. When you clone the repository, fetch all the branches, you have exactly the same copy. It's just that you agree that one of them is like a central place where everybody's pushing their code. Okay, so plan for today is talk about like what is Git, uh, what are the internals and all of the smaller pieces that are building up uh, the things that you're working every day with, how to think about it, at least how I think about it for it to make it easier for me and what is Git flow? And that's something that a big chunk of you guys already know what it is because we are using that uh, in some variation in all of our projects. And please stop me if you have any questions, if you wanna discuss something, I would be super happy to. I'm not saying I know everything about Git and one important thing that there is more than one solution for all of the problems that you have in Git. Okay. So first thing to talk a little bit about the anatomy, as I mentioned before, it is stupid. It doesn't know what it, ha what it holds. It is just a tracking system for the changes that you are doing. For me, I'm thinking about it as directed the graph of commits. So every commit, and we'll talk a little bit about what the commit is in a second, every commit points to another one, and that's uh, how you can manipulate the graph, how you can find changes, how you can go through the history. It's directed because history has an order and you cannot go backwards in a way. Uh, it supports branching and branches are, and I'm, we're going to show that in an example repository, branches are just pointers to the commits. It's just that, so they're super cheap to create, so never ever be afraid of creating a new branch. Uh, and they are super fast to well, handle. and they, I, my belief is that the branching is the most powerful thing in the Git, and that's what enables you to do uh, like all of the feature brand, that enables you to work on the features on a separate branches and not have the problems with all the other people, like conflicts. There are ways to work with Git in a way that uh, some people will prefer to commit to the master branch all the time. I personally don't like it because then you don't have a clean working uh, version of your product and you have something that is like kind of in between. Of course, you can have like the production branch and on the master have like something that is unfinished, but you will still have stuff that may not be uh, safe to merge to production. Uh, it also supports tags and that, that's, tags are very, very similar to branches. You can just point to one commit uh, and just remember where it is and it's super useful, especially when you wanna tag like a release version. You can also tag uh, a commit when, that you believe you did a super awesome job and you wanna remember that and uh, get back to it at any point. A tag can be named in any way, just a simple string the same way as a, a branch. And I highly suggest using them, especially when you are trying out different things and you want to have that them all on one branch. That's another way to like remember the commit. And I'm going to go into like in a moment that nothing is lost in, uh, in a repository. Like even if you do a rebase, you can get back to the old branch. Even if you remove the branch, it's actually still there. 
the, the same holds true for tax, and I may probably forget about mentioning that later. Git is also distributed. And that, as I mentioned before, that means everybody has the same copy. And we just agree that, for example, GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, okay, hopefully, hopefully not Bitbucket, but that's one place where we are pushing all of our changes, where we create pull requests, where we have like the, let's say the more, most up-to-date version. Any questions so far? I assume not in that case. Uh, wait a second. Where did I know? Okay. Okay, we went to that. Uh, so the next thing I want to discuss with you guys is what is the commit? Like the commit is the thing that you, uh, which holds all of the changes that you did with some message, and it's uniquely and identifiable by the hash, and that hash is something that. If you remember it, you can always, always find the changes that you had and all of the history that goes after that. The commit consists of the message, so that the, the thing that you wrote, an author and committer, those actually can be two different people. And you will see that, uh, for example, when someone suggests some changes in your pull request in GitHub, and you can commit someone else's uh, suggestion. It will have two authors then. A date when the commit was created, a parent hash, so if you, the only, it, it's going to be null for the first commit. It would not have the parent. Uh, but after that, all of the commits, their hash will be dependent on their parent. And that will come into play when we were, we'll be talking about rebase in a second. And the tree, and the tree is like all of the changes that you did uh, it, that are saved in a nice structure. And we are calculating the uh, hash of the tree to get, a, like we're calculating hash of all of the blobs and all of the folders, and it has a structure. I don't wanna go into details of that. I have never ever had to like think around with that. I just believe it's worth knowing that there are some chunk, like some branches in that tree, and that uh, like what you have in the, in the tree, what, what changes you have influences the hash of the commit, because that's the only thing that actually interests you. When I'm going to do any kind of demos, I'm also going to try to create a random text that will not influence, that will not create any conflicts, or I will not have to actually uh, think about what is inside of the comic. That's not my focus, to be honest, and that's not, not something that uh, I believe is super important to understand like the entire idea of the Git. So SHA of the commit is, as I mentioned, uh, calculated based on the message, author, date, parent hash, and SHA of the tree. And that generates a unique hash of the commit. So if you change the date, you change the author, you change the message, you change the tree, you change the parent, hash changes, and that's totally different commit. Any questions? Anybody hear me at all? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What is hash of a tree? How is tree represented? So this is this is the tree. What I was mentioning, showing here. Uh, so it will have all of the changes that you have in the comment. So let's say that you added a for loop somewhere. It will be, or you added like in here. Uh, you have an avatar and logo. Those are hashes of those uh, files. And then they are in an asset folder, and we are calculating a hash of those two. Like of, I think we concatenate them if I remember correctly, and, and uh, calculate the hash of that. Then there is there are changes in index, and that's also uh, we calculate hash of that. So, through, from all of the changes that you did everywhere in the uh, in the repository, we are calculating one hash, like going up as in the tree. And the idea is so we can represent uniquely the changes in the uh, in whatever you did. Some time ago, Pavel was doing a lecture about crypto and he was mentioning uh, hashing. Like if you change even one letter, it will change the hash of the entire document. The same goes here. So that gives us, uh, we know that the, if the hash of the three, hashes of the three are equal, with a very, very high probability that the changes are exactly the same. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so 
the next thing is the life cycle of the changes. You probably all know that already. So when you have first something that is untracked, you can add the file. It will be tracked but unmodified. Uh, sorry, if you add the file, it will go to modified, like if you have had some changes already. If you uh, add it, if you do git add, it will go to staged. You can commit it and then again, you have like a clean working directory. You can go back, for, you can move back uh, things from stage to modified. And I'm gonna start with a simple demo. I hope, do you guys see what I'm typing here? Let me try to do really? it a bit. What about now? Yeah, for better. Okay. So let's do, let's create, or actually that rebase thing was okay. So I have some commits here, but that doesn't matter. And this demo work just generates a random file for me. Now you can see in the status. Uh, from time to time, I'm gonna use uh, some shortcuts I have. So if you don't recognize them right away, just ask. You see that I have one file that is not tracked, but I can just do git add and the name of that file. And now it's being tracked. So I can commit it to, uh, to the new commit I'm preparing. If I would create another file, now you see that I have two of them and I can commit one and don't commit another. So if I would do commit and one file, you will see now it's just one file. Uh, there's new commit called one file and there is the file that I created after that is still there. So I don't have to commit all at once. You can, if you do git add, git add dot adds everything in the directory, of course. Now it's added, but I changed my mind for whatever reason. I could do git reset and it will give it me back to uh, untracked files. So I, I can do this this way. Uh, if I can provide a file name or the path to the file name to select exactly which file I wanna reset. Let's say that everything I did was wrong. I can add everything to the uh, tracking and I can do reset hard. This is first dangerous command. And I think the only dangerous command I know that will remove the changes that you did and you cannot get it back. The reason is they were never committed to Git. There, there is no, copy of them or the tracked version. And when I do that, it will basically remove all the changes that were done. So it will reset me to the uh, current master. If the previous commit that you did was wrong, you can do git reset soft and at minus one. Hat is the current place where you are at. And this will undo my last commit and this will be the last the files that were added in the last commit will be uh, in state in staging environment in st like in staging so prepared to be committed that's useful when you forgot added something or you, you committed the wrong thing and you want to have a really clean history of changes i don't find myself using that quite often because what I usually will do, I will do some changes, add them and amend to the previous file. You can do no edit, so you don't have to change the commit message or you can just do git amend and it will ask me to also change the uh, message of the commit. Okay, any questions about that so far? Okay. The only difference between uh, git reset and git reset with uh, minus minus soft is that with soft it's already staged. Yes, so you can think about the stages like you have changes, you have track changes, you have stage staged changes to be committed mm -hmm. and committed, and reset with soft or without or with hard is like how much back you want to go in those stages. I, again, I don't find myself using them quite often because uh, I can just commit and add stuff. And as I mentioned, git reset hard is the only thing that basically nukes whatever you have, the, all of the changes that you have. Uh, 
you don't have to do, if you have changes that you wanna get rid of, you can you don't have to add them to the staging. You can just do git clean. Git clean. Yeah, so you can remove all of the, like nuke all of the changes that you did without adding them to staging. I don't like any of those commits because again, you can lose some work that you are doing. And what, I'm, what I find myself doing quite often is doing like reusing previous comments and just like assuming that this was what I wanted. So I will click this like quickly without reading everything. And that's because like I wanna do something quickly and that's dangerous. So I don't go ahead and use reset if you want, but do it at your own uh, like, choice, like I'm not gonna suggest using them because I don't believe that they are the best way to go about using uh, Git. I would prefer to commit something and then rewrite the history because even if you like, break something, you can easily go back. So another thing I wanted to show you since we are here is uh, there is a Git, Git folder in all of your Git repositories and it holds all the internals of Git. So we're going to talk a little bit of the things that we mentioned uh, previously. So you have head, uh, actually, and it says that head, so where we are currently are at, is in uh, refs heads master. So, okay, let's see what that is. And surprise, surprise, that's everything it takes to be a branch. You, head is pointing to a master branch and master branch is just pointing to a commit and it starts with 6cd and if i do git log 6cd is a master branch uh, what else do we have interesting here we have Objects and refs. Objects are those change those treats that I mentioned before. And with inside of refs, you will have ads and tags. So tags will mention, as I mentioned before, are very very similar to branches. We don't have any tags at the moment. If I would add one, it would appear there. So. And we have two branches at the moment: feature and master. So feature master, uh, sorry, feature branch points another, at another commit. And if I would show you all the branches, again, feature master using the Git commits. So everything that, that is happening with Git is represented in, in here. Some people are able to tinker with that. I would be afraid of breaking the repo. You can do some things inside here. I would suggest using the commands because they will allow you to achieve virtually anything that you like. Any questions about that? Okay. So we had a demo. Uh, so again, how I think about Git is that we have a set of uh, commits and they are pointing to each other. So this, those arrows shows that this is directed graph. It's acyclic, so you cannot like go in a cycle. Each commit uh, can be moved anywhere and I will show you a few examples. Like if you wanna merge, for example, C5 with C3 and have a new changes that will only reflect those, that all of that is totally doable. It's, and there is more than one way to uh, achieve that. For me, like if you think about any merges, rebase, is that you wanna change how the graph looks like, like create either a new node that will connect to existing one or connect to existing nodes or like copy the node that exists somewhere else and get it to your branch. All of that is possible. It's just that you need to know a few uh, comments and to achieve everything that I mentioned, you should be able to achieve all of them with git merge, git rebase and git cherry pick. And we'll go into the details of them in a second. We went over what is branch more or less. I showed you an example and Again, it's just a commit that has a pointer to it. And for me, it's an entry point to the that Git graph that we just mentioned. So you cannot, when you are interacting with Git and you don't remember the hash, like when you're interacting with Git through the command line and you don't remember the hash of the commit, 
like or check it through log and then like uh, use that that hash that you copy from there. You cannot interact really with the uh, commit somewhere in in the branch. So that's that's like why it's an entry point. Okay, any questions? I have a few videos showing how like the things that you are doing every day uh, look on the graphs. So they may it may like click uh, about what how to why I'm thinking about Git as a graph. Okay, I guess you don't have any questions. So the merge, super simple. When you have two commits, you merge them into one. You just create a new commit and it will have two parents, the branch that, uh, of two branches that you merged. That's, I think the only situation where the commit will have two parents. You can also merge what usually happens when you are on master and there are some changes on origin master. You can also do a merge where the history is linear, which means that you can go from this, this commit here, C3, without breaking the direction of graphs to the commit that you want to merge with. Then you will be able to do the uh, fast forward merge. And it's going to just move the pointer of master to C3, or this branch that we have here. You can force creating a new branch, if you really, a new commit, if you really want. Uh, you can like say, hey, don't do fast forward. That's how this merge is called. And to show you the previous one, if we would mark, if we would want to merge the branch and master, we cannot go from C4 to C3 without breaking uh, the directed graph, because like there is no arrow uh, to C2 or to C3. Make sense? Okay, so. As I mentioned, you can merge with commit. You can do a rebase. So rebase is where you are uh, taking the changes from one branch and applying them one by one uh, on top of the other. And here is a really nice animation. I, the first time I seen, seen that website, I'm gonna post a link to it uh, after the call. The first time I seen this, uh, this website, it's really nice thing to show other people how it works and to understand to myself. And sometimes I use that to have a plan what I want to do to unpack what I did in Git, because that also happens to me sometimes. But as you can see, it takes a C3, then takes C4, and it applies those two changes one after the other. So when you are rebasing, you will sometimes, when you do that, you will sometimes stop between the two commits because there is a conflict. It will ask you to resolve the conflict and then start doing that uh, after, uh, like start applying the commits that were after that. Also, you can see here that the commits C3 and C4 are still there. They are uh, not super visible in this uh, picture. I, that's one thing that I don't like about what they are doing, but you can still check out to them if you just remember the hash and they also meant they are also, let me just pause it here. C4 here has a, a apostrophe at the end because this hash is gonna be different for this commit versus this one because C3, now C3 hash, C3 uh, quote has a different parent. So the hash of the C3 changed. Since the hash of the C3 changed, then the hash of C4 changed. But again, you can still access those two guys. And I'm gonna show you how to get those if you forgot. Uh, yeah, you would say you're changing the base from uh, C1 to C5. Yes. That's why it's rebasing, changing where it points at. Okay, so actually, rebase is okay. So I, as I mentioned, I have two branches here and I also have this nice thing. Nice thing. So this is, this is called Git Kraken, a uh, client for Git. And that's the only thing I'm using clients is usually to have a nice drawing of the tree, how, like how the graph looks like. So I can understand what is happening a little bit more because it's much nicer this way than uh, this. And you see all of the branches at once. So what I wanna do is rebase this guy feature on top of master. So I want to check out the feature. 
do I need to refresh it somehow? Okay, now I'm here and I want to rebase on top of master. So I type git rebase master, but I want to show you something more. I can do git rebase minus E, which stands for interactive. And sometimes when we are doing pull requests, we want to squash the changes into one. We, you want to, or you doing the, during the work, you want to reward them somehow or change the order. So basically you can change the order here. I could move this to on top of this one and that would just change the order of commits. Nothing would be broken because as we have seen, it takes the changes, it takes each commit and it copies it on top of the uh, branch that you are rebasing to. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just squash them into one commit. If you want to squash them into one commit, it's usually easier to do not squash, but uh, the other one F, I think, and it'll exactly. just use the commit message from the first one. So you don't have to delete all these. Yeah, but usually what you would like to do a correct message here. So for the demo, yes, that's still going to be work in progress, but uh, usually I would suggest having something useful. Uh, some people in our team are using Visual Studio Code with git lens, which nicely shows the commit message for each line that you are at. And that helps to understand what someone did, uh, or like working on the piece of the code that you're looking at. But let's say that's all we're gonna do. Uh, and yep, it rebased on top of the master. Let me do a refresh here. Yeah. And this is a new commit that we had. It's on top of master, has all of the changes that we had before, uh, I had on the feature branch. But that's not all I wanted to show you. There is something called reflog, which will show where our head was. So it also says moving from master to feature. And this one says F9, the commit of the of feature branch was F929. And as you can see here, uh, Commit this commit that I have right now has two two dd. So am I correct? Git log two dd. Yes. So let's say I did something wrong in the uh, during the the tree base. I can take this one check out to from feature to master this guy and I can go and I cannot change the branch that I'm currently on. So I can, I have to move my head somewhere else. So I can have to check out somewhere else. So let me check out for master for time being. And I can say feature backup, or just let's do feature and paste the hash of the commit. And I'm gonna do dash F to override the existing commit. And if I refresh, hope it works and I didn't fuck up anything. Yay, I have what I had before. So I can redo everything that I did. Like I, I can do a rebase again because I solved the conflicts in the wrong way and I prefer to start over then deal with the messy code I had or do a merge because it will be it will solve all of the mm, conflicts in one step or I want to do anything else. <clears throat> uh, this reflog you can basically look at all of the com like all of the things that happen in the meantime like that someone committed check out to another branch it also shows you that I was squashing and it shows you all of the things that happened automatically under the hood while it was like rebasing. This is the thing that I, um, I did, like I paste, I typed git rebase i, then I did some something in the, like I said how the rebase actually should work, but those were automatically done for me. So it was doing them uh, like one by one. Uh, any questions to reflock? No, okay, great. Uh, okay, so next thing is the last part I wanted to talk with you about is Git flow. And the way that we are using that, we have this uh, like kind of force on us because we are using uh, pull requests. So on GitHub, we have master branch and we are opening all, all of our feature branches. We don't name them feature branches like feature slash something. We just name them whatever we're working on. On some projects, we add the ticket number too, but those are the red ones here. 
So you are doing a normal pull request. After that, you can either just merge in into master, you can rebase, squash, whatever that doesn't really matter. But the idea is that always on master, you have like a completed feature that shouldn't break anything else and master should always be green. And you should be able to do a release from master. Now that, then you have another branch that here is in blue where you have releases and you see that someone also is tagging the releases. So it's easier to later find what was actually like on production. So when we are looking at the, some crash log from production, we can check out the code that is actually running and not to guess is this line actually uh, what was breaking because we are looking on a master code, which, uh, a code from master, which may be different. And there is this blue and black uh, thing in between, which is basically for fixes and hot, hot fixes where they need to go straight to production too. And again, that's like a, another branch that we agree on merging both to master and production. The only difference is that the hot fixes come from production because you wanna just fix something and you don't wanna like quickly fix something. Uh, and you don't wanna introduce all of the code that is from the master. So you can see here, where is my mouse? Jesus. Okay, I cannot show you with my mouse for some reason, but the blue, the black one, the black commit has a parent from uh, master, sorry, has a parent from uh, blue, so that's production, but then it's merged to master and to production. And the idea is because later when we do a release from master again to production, you don't wanna lose that uh, hotfix, hot of course. Any questions to Gitflow? Any comments? Anything you, else you'd like to talk about? Got a thing. I noticed recently that when you're working on your feature in your branch and CI passes fine, sometimes when you merge into master, it breaks because someone merged before you and your changes are incompatible, but uh, you can still merge them. And uh, as far as I know, you can just uh, merge master in your branch before merging, but mm -hmm. I still find that it still happens sometimes. Is this like, okay, do we, is there a way to uh, not hmm. do that? So what you are uh, touching is more about uh, the code and what you have there not get itself, but what I, try to do is every single time I have, okay, maybe not every single time, but when I see that my branch is way out of date or there were a few bigger changes on master since like my branch was open, I try to rebase on top of master to have like all of the changes. And when I see that I have a like long running branch, I try to rebase every day or two just to have the latest changes in my branch. So I see if there's like wrong, as you said, incompatible changes uh, in both branches like much faster. Uh, I do believe it's gonna be project specific, uh, this problem that you're mentioning, and I do believe that the best way to do to deal with that is to keep your branch up to date with master as much as you can. Although I don't understand why it would break when you merge in the master to your branch it passes and you merge back to master, you have the same code. So I would suspect that the tests are a little bit flaky. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is that uh, when you merge in your branch, in the meantime, someone could, could have uh, merged into master. Oh yeah, so. It happens rarely, but. The only thing that, that you can do is, again, just make sure that your, uh, stuff is up to date there some people are forcing like linear history so you need to, before merging you need to rebase and you can only merge with fast forward and in that case what what you are describing you wouldn't be able to merge in the first place because someone else had the changes on the master which is problematic because then you need to synchronize between people hey i just rebase can we wait a second till i till like ci passes for me and i merge and 
it doesn't scale very well if you have even a few people on the team and they are merging everything at the end of the day that's like that's a problem basically so i would just say hey uh keep your stuff up to date and if it breaks in master after you merge just fix it quickly after that and that's all how, how do you fix that if master breaks do you re revert and merge in again or do you apply new changes on top that depends on the project and for example with mines in mines and dimitri's team we cannot really uh, commit to master without approval of someone else so i would need to open a pr and say hey guys this is a fix for a breaking uh, tests and please review it uh, as soon as you can because we cannot revert so to revert the changes i would need to have an access to write to master without a review Okay, uh, last thing I have is a quick demo how Gitflow works, more or less. Uh, and when we have a feature branch, we wanna merge to master it. We are usually creating a new uh, commit, then we can just merge to production. Sometimes we have uh, another um, branch that is for staging. And we can merge to that. I think that most in most of the cases you are going to have something similar to what we have here. It's just not gonna you will not just not gonna have a nice way to draw it like this unless you find a tool that does it for you. There are probably some command line tools that will do a nice graph, but I don't find them easy to read again uh and yeah that's all i had any questions anything you would like to discuss okay